Our story begins with Freud. He is born in 1856 in what is now part of the Czech Republic. His family struggles financially in his early years. However, by 1860, Freud's family is able to move to Vienna. In Vienna, Freud gains access to a prestigious education. He proves to be a strong student, and by the time he finishes high school, he's proficient in Italian, French, German, Spanish, English, Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Freud is heavily influenced by medical philosophies of the time period, as well as by significant thinkers like Darwin and Nietzsche. In 1873, when Freud is 17 years old, he begins his university education in medicine, one of the few prestigious career opportunities available for Jewish men at that time in Vienna. He graduates with his medical degree in 1881. In 1882, he begins practicing medicine and soon finds himself working in a psychiatric clinic specializing in neuropathology. A common belief in the scientific and medical community at that time was that inferior people or those with bad genes or weakened stock were more likely to succumb to mental disorders. Those within what would later be called the eugenics movement advocate for the prohibition of marriage and for the sterilization of inferior groups of human beings, including the mentally ill and later the Jews. Freud abandons his career in medicine and research in 1886 to open a private practice treating nervous disorders. His clients are primarily upper-class Jewish women. He starts out using hypnosis, but later discards the technique in favor of free association. As Freud sees more patients and hears their stories, he comes to believe that neurosis is caused by childhood trauma and, more specifically, sexual abuse. Rampant childhood sexual abuse is highly conflictual with Victorian culture of the late 1800s, and Freud is ostracized for these claims. During this time, Freud begins experiencing disturbing dreams and symptoms consistent with depression and anxiety. This prompts his own self-analysis, which ultimately results in a significant revision of his theory. Some disagreement exists as to whether his theory shifted in response to social pressures or if the shift occurred as part of a natural progression using the scientific method. Through his own dream work and free association, Freud uncovers an intense childhood love for his mother and jealousy towards his father. He concludes that his patients' reports of sexual abuse were likely childhood fantasies. It is now his belief that these fantasies become problematic when they are repressed. Although Freud continues to be largely rejected by the scientific and medical community in Vienna, he attracts a dedicated group of supporters by 1910. In 1913, Watson publishes his Behaviorist Manifesto, rejecting Freud's consciousness and emphasizing the importance of behavior. However, after World War I, Psychoanalysis gains traction as it's used to treat what we now refer to as PTSD, primarily through dream work. By the Roaring Twenties, Freud's theory is well known in the U.S. Freud flees Vienna in 1938 to escape the Nazis and dies shortly after that. Following World War II and well into the 1950s, psychoanalytic theory's influence continues to spread and psychoanalysis becomes a foundation for the development of various forms of psychotherapy.